In this video from the Metabolic and Resilience Club, we will discuss METs, specifically going over what they are and why they're important. Over the course of this presentation, we will discuss what is a MET, how METs change when we exercise, how many METs we should aim for, practical steps to improve our METs, and the limitations of using METs measurements. Let's start off by talking about what a MET is. METs, which stands for metabolic equivalence, is the amount of oxygen used by someone of a certain weight when doing something for some period of time. An activity that involves one MET, for instance, would represent the energy used from just sitting still and doing absolutely nothing. More strenuous activities like running or jogging would require more METs, and less strenuous ones would require fewer METs. Overall, METs are really just numbers that represent the amount of energy used when doing an activity or its intensity. So as we mentioned, one MET is the energy you spend sitting at rest. It's your resting or basal metabolic rate. So for example, the activity with a MET value of 4 means that you're exerting 4 times the energy that you would if you were sitting still. So how vigorously you do the activity will impact your MET score. So we'll look at three different uh, types of activities to determine how many METs they typically are. So we'll see things like low intensity activities involve one to three METs. These can include sitting at a desk, as you can see on the table above, um, with a 1.3 MET scale, uh, sitting playing cards is 1.5, standing at a desk is 1.8, and it goes up all the way to something like fishing while sitting, which is 2.5 METs. Moving on to moderate intensity met, uh, activities, these in, in involve three to six METs, and these include things like swimming laps, um, doing housework, weight training, and uh, high intensity activities or more vigorous ones have over six METs, and these involve running, jumping rope, playing competitive sports, etc. And it's important to note that um, how intense you uh, perform the activity will impact your MET score. So one activity can have different scores depending on um, how, uh, how vigorously you, you perform it. And you can also refer to the table for other activities as well. So how many METs should you be aiming for? Well, the American Heart Association recommends at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise each week for optimal cardiovascular health. So that amounts to about 500 MET minutes per week. Um, you can perform moderate exercise like brisk walking over a longer period of time, but also you can perform vigorous activities for shorter time periods. So it really depends on your personal preferences and what you're able to uh, commit to and um, perform. There are a few important practical steps to take to improve your METs um, and to get to that level that the American Heart Association recommends. So the general kind of bottom line is that it's important to move more frequently and to sit less. Um, these are all things that if you're thinking about exercising more or um, joining a sport, for example, it's important to discuss these with your doctor um, and to consider the frequency of the, uh, the frequency of the activity. So, you know, is that going to happen once a day, a few times a week, a few times a month, the duration of the activity or the session in which you'll be um, uh, performing this exercise is it 20 minutes an hour 30 minutes you know you can split it uh, you know multiple sessions a day once a day um, and and finally the intensity so how much energy is needed um, as, as referring to that earlier slide with the light activity versus moderate versus uh, vigorous activity that also factors in how many Mets you'll be doing in a, a given amount of time so when considering the type of exercise as well um, there are a few different ones, and there are aerobic cardiovascular types of exercises, which are things like running and swimming. There are muscle strengthening exercises like weightlifting, um, flexibility exercises, which involve stretching, um, and finally balance exercises. Um, and it's important to note that it's, it's not really um, helpful to do too much because too quickly because it can result in injury. So if METs uh, measure the energy that someone uses, uh, performing a given activity, some, one of the limitations of using METs is that people use energy at different rates. It's quite variable. In fact, the um, model on which METs were based was 
um, on a 40 year old male who wears 70 kilograms or around 154 pounds. So you can imagine that many people deviate from um, that prototype. So, um, you know, variations in the actual METs that you, for example, um, output will be different from that variation. But those, uh, those are general guidelines and they're still important for physicians to use. So some of the factors that can influence your metabolic rate include um, your age, your gender, weight, uh, what your resting metabolic rate is. So what, it, what is your true uh, met uh, at, at the value one? Is it really 3.5? It could be different, um, slightly at least. And um, considerations include body composition, fitness level, and finally genetics.